Hello and welcome to another episode of Sandy Killer Projects. Uh, today we're going to do the uh, high pressure power steering line on the Red XJ. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, that's what keeps us making all these videos for you. Um, so the uh, high pressure power steering line is the one that comes off of the um, front of the reservoir, the back of the pump right here. It circles around and the reason why it has a tendency to go bad which if you can see right here, this hose comes down and then makes a full 90 degree turn back the other direction and comes all the way over here to the steering box. What ends up happening with them is back here in the back of this turn, uh, they, they crack and start weeping uh, through the hose. So I actually uh, attempted to start this uh, video before, but the problem was I didn't have these guys. You need uh, these guys to be able to get down into there, that or you need a line wrench, but a line wrench won't really fit because of the amount of space that's in there. You really need these uh, uh, crow foot wrenches. So I ended up having to run out and get a set. So that will get this guy right here, which is the other end of that line without having to take all the other lines off of it. So uh, let's get started. All right, so for the replacement hose, I have um, this, this right here. This kit is a uh, Gates part number 353770. It is the exact replacement hose that goes in this position. Um, this top one is a 16 millimeter and just uh, so that you can see how the crow's feet work, I'm gonna do it on the top one. Normally I just use a regular wrench on this, but um, this just gives you an idea how it's gonna work on the bottom because you're not really gonna be able to see it. Um, this top one is a 16 millimeter. Um, it fits right onto the socket end of this and you just crank the guy loose and it pops and then this guy will very easily unscrew before you um, unscrew it though make sure you have a drip pan underneath which uh, I do uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop the line off of this um, and then once this comes off some fluid will come out and drip onto your uh, radiator hose so make sure you wipe it all up before you start it up all right so as I mentioned before this is a tough location to get in and out of I've got an 18 millimeter crow's foot down there on the line I'm going to break it loose with a super, super long extension so I can do it up here in the engine compartment. Um, the, uh, once this comes out, a lot more fluid should come loose because it'll uh, back off pressure from the uh, steering box. Okay, so now that I have the line off, uh, you can see uh, on mine that I actually had a pinhole in the back of here that was causing it to leak Generally what happens is these age they get cracks along here and then uh, the oil weeps through uh, the wall of the of the hose um, But uh, even even just a little pinhole like this, especially with uh, some time uh, They'll wear out the other thing you got to notice is each end of these have a, a rubber grommet on the end of it your new your new kit should actually come with uh, some grommets. I'll show you that in a second all right, so the kit that I have uh, comes with this little cap that you're supposed to put the O-rings on if in the event you're gonna push it over the edge of this. Um, on this style, on the XJ, it doesn't have to go past the end of the flare. So um, the simplest way to put these on is just to walk them over the edge so that they sit like that. That is the position that you want them in. And there's one of those on both ends. So here's the other end and you literally just walk the o-ring over make sure you don't cut it or pinch it or any of that as you're doing it um, then you install okay so the I have the the new hose in um, which you can see barely right here um, it is uh, kind of a pain to get in there you have to fish it um, back underneath your your radiator hose which is that guy right there and then get the open end to go through it and then turn it and drop it in Okay, the problem with that, at least on the one that I got, is the height was taller than the height of the other uh, low pressure hose next to it. So what I ended up having to do is uh, on this, this radius right here, I had to bring it down a hair, which on this one, it's actually more flat. So um, with it being more, more flat, uh, it would fit under there easier. The other one had more of a point and then dropped back, making it taller than the one that was there. So I had to um, finesse this edge uh, down a little bit without kinking it. Um, I just very gently put it onto a vise and, and, and moved it just a hair, just enough to get it to where it would fit underneath 
um, that low pressure hose that's in there. So now it's in and seated. All I have to do is reconnect the top hose. All right, so once you've tightened up the lower one uh, with 18, uh, back up here for the 16, um, as you can see, it wraps around uh, your reservoir. That's how this guy's supposed to go in. Um, I would do what I'm doing, get it hand tight, and then put your wrench on it. When you put your wrench on it, remember, um, not man killer, killer tight. You don't have to do it to any crazy torque. You're crushing a, a rubber O-ring. If you uh, crush it and then open it back up to see what's going on because you don't like the way it is, that O-ring is pretty much no good. Um, it's going to sit down on that. You're just going to bring it down to a little bit more and snug. Okay, so now that um, it is tight, I'm just going to top off the reservoir for the fluid that I lost. Um, and then I'm going to start it up and take a look to make sure nothing is leaking. Um, once uh, I've checked that, um, I'll know everything's good. I'm also going to uh, go underneath the car and wipe off all the oil on the uh, lower parts of the car because that may make it seem like it's leaking when it's not. Um, there, You get a lot of fluid on your... Um, steering box and on your lower radiator hose all got to be cleaned off um, otherwise it's going to start showing signs of a leak on something that you just replace which isn't leaking uh, when you are uh, checking for leaks make sure you're looking here and here same thing on the lower one at the top of the hose and at the thread area all right so i've checked both the points on the the top of the high pressure power steering hose and both of the points down on the lower connection for the uh, steering gear box um, i've also Turn the wheel, pull left and right to make sure that it drew fluid in uh, to the line. Um, and then double check my fluid to make sure that I still had uh, fluid up towards the top. Um, make sure to keep a, a bottle of power steering fluid at the ready, just in case you need to fill up some more. Um, my power steering has a little bit of a whine um, as the uh, rack and pinion is getting older, um, but it uh, is much smoother than it was before because of the leaking issue that I have with the hose. Alright, so uh, this whole job took me all of about a half an hour to do. Um, remember too that um, I'm filming while I'm doing it, so really the whole project takes about 15-20 minutes. I think the extra 5 minutes in my case may have been because uh, I had to uh, bend that hose a little bit. Um, but, as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll keep making more videos. Thanks.